connected bus. Let me give you a quick tour of this bus and why it's different. Uh, we call this a connected bus and it's a joint development between Cisco and the city of San Francisco. So from a technology perspective, some of the things we have on the bus, I'll give you a quick tour. Over here we have some of the bus infrastructure. And the bus receives wireless connectivity through a Cisco 3270, which is our mobile access router. We have dual radios connected to this uh, MAR, mobile access router, that gives us roughly DSL speeds to the bus. So in addition to this bus being a traveling hotspot where people can sit down on the bus, use their laptops, their PDAs, their phones, and be productive when they're driving to work or riding to work, uh, the, the bus also uses the MAR to get access to external services, which we'll show you in a minute. Um, in addition to the MAR, there are a variety of different electrical subsystems on the bus, and we have a uh, DC to AC inverter that powers some of the electronics in the bus, like the touchscreen displays, which we'll cover in a second. Now, if I take you up to the front of the bus, you can look at some of the computing infrastructure that we've installed on the bus to power some of the bus services. Here we have four uh, vehicle-grade ruggedized PCs, solid-state drives. Uh, they power all the different uh, touchscreens throughout the bus, as well as some services that the bus receives through the MAR. We'll cover that in a minute. Uh, from an interactive perspective on the bus, there are five screens on the bus. We have a touchscreen behind the driver here. Oh, an airline that uh, <laughs> We have two screens, uh, left and right, on the bus. These are non-touch for informational purposes only. And then in the back of the bus, we have screens on both sides. These are called the sail panels. And we have a screen on this sail panel and a screen on this sail panel. These screens are controlled independently via independent computers. Um, so multiple people can be using these uh, services at the same time. Let me walk you through a couple of the services that we're showing uh, or we're offering the riders in the bus. These are all touchscreen displays. Uh, if I don't interact with the touchscreen, it'll roll through a variety of different screens every 30 seconds or so. But if I, if I want to get a service on the bus, I can walk up and touch the screen. Um, some of the things that you can do, there's a bus location service, so I touch that, and it shows me where I am. There's a GPS um, uh, transponder on the bus, and I can interact with this map and uh, see exactly in real time where I am on the bus, uh, where the bus is in the city. In addition to that, I have wait times on the bus. Uh, these are predictive wait times, and basically what this means is that when I'm on the bus traveling down the street, this shows intersecting routes with a prediction time. So for example, if I get off at the next stop, which is Folsom in Pacific, I'll be waiting approximately six minutes, six minutes for the next bus to arrive. In addition to that, we have some messaging around connectivity on the bus, so some of the services you can use while sitting on the bus. You can use your PDA or phone or laptop and, and get wireless connectivity as you're riding the bus to your destination. Um, there's some messaging about green, uh, and this is significant for this bus because it's a hybrid bus and it replaces about 270 tons of carbon emissions every year, and it's a 95% emissions-free vehicle, and it helps offset about 55,000 car trips a year. Now, while it's not a significant number for a given bus, there are about 800 buses in the fleet in San Francisco, uh, 86 of which are hybrid and uh, soon many more. And as you start putting some of these IP-enabled services in buses and you start replicating it across hundreds of buses across dozens of cities, now we're looking at tens of millions of car trips that we're offsetting and really reducing carbon emissions. Uh, finally, we have a green calculator here, which lets people uh, play with some dials to see how their uh, personal experience on the bus is helping to save um, the environment. So, for example, I can tell uh, the green uh, gauge here how many miles I'm traveling per trip, and on average, it's about 11 miles. And then I can say how many trips per week I take. On average, that's about five. And then I can see how many grams of carbon dioxide um, uh, savings I'm uh, contributing to. Uh, there's some messaging around future services, so some of the things that we're doing in the future on the bus, uh, some IP video, uh, traffic, traffic signal priority, uh, more onboard entertainment, as well as a variety of operator services. Uh, speaking of operator services, if I'm the operator of the bus, there are screens for me too. So for example, as, as the operator, I have a vehicle maintenance screen, and when the bus rides into the yard, the bus can, can transmit uh, relevant information from the bus to the systems in the yard. There's also a variety of reports uh, that we can perform. Typically, these, these reports are done manually through paper, so we're helping to automate a lot of those processes. 
And then finally, there's an emergency um, option here. If there were a situation on the bus, uh, we can touch that and the driver gets notified as well as external entities. So there are uh, LED displays on the ex exterior of the bus and right now while we're in emergency mode, they're indicating that there's an emergency situation going on on the bus. We could also stream video back to, let's say, the police car behind the bus. I'll go ahead and resume that. So that concludes the uh, interactive uh, portion of the touchscreens. Uh, and as, you can, as I mentioned before, we've got two touchscreens in the, in the uh, back, two screens in the uh, left and right side of the bus, and then a touchscreen behind the driver, uh, all for the purposes of increasing productivity, providing entertainment and services to the rider, and to incent more riders on the bus, as well as uh, assist with uh, operator services and capabilities back at the yard. Well, to be honest to you, I mean, rush hour, home and going to work, I think it's a, a real good idea. Uh, it would give people uh, much more to do on their way home. I mean, you know, and going to work.